Welcome back to another week of what's for dinner. This week I have some more super easy and delicious meals to share with you. They're all very budget friendly and easy to throw together on a busy weeknight. I am a busy mom of two, so I love super quick and easy meals that don't take a lot of time or effort. And that is what these meals are all about. I do post a new what's for dinner video every single Sunday. So if that is something that you are interested in, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any more of those. And also don't forget to check out my video from Friday. I did a dump and go crock pot meals video and I'm actually starting a new series this fall doing tons of crock pot meals. So if you like really, really quick and easy meals, that is definitely a video you are going to enjoy. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into all of these delicious meals. On this first night, I made a loaded french fry casserole. This was something a little bit different and new that I had never tried before, but it was super delicious. I'm just starting off with one pound of cooked lean ground beef. There is also a little bit of onion chopped in there. And now I'm adding in two cans of cream of mushroom soup. For seasonings, I kept this super basic and simple. I just added in some black pepper with some garlic powder. I didn't feel like this needed any extra salt just because there's a lot of sodium in the cream of mushroom. And then of course, I'm sneaking in some vegetables. So I added in probably about half a bag of these frozen vegetables. And this was a two pound bag. You can do a little bit more if you want or a little bit less. I like to go somewhere right in the middle. I love sneaking in veggies where I can with my kids and they definitely really didn't notice them in this dish. I'm just mixing all of this up and getting it ready to go. Of course I'm sneaking in some cheese because you guys already know we love cheese in this house. I added in probably about half a cup of Colby and Monterey Jack and I'm getting that mixed in there as well. I will also be adding some on top but I like to have a little bit mixed throughout as well. Now I'm just spraying my pan with a little bit of oil and then I'm just spreading this mixture all across the bottom. So this is kind of like a tater tot hot dish, but on top I decided to top it with some fries because I did not have tater tots and we had tons of these fries to use up. So I figured this would be a fun twist on your standard tater tot casserole. I did add a little bit of salt on top just because these fries were not salted at all. And then of course I'm topping it with some more cheese to make these kind of like a loaded french fry casserole. I'm just making this up. You guys know I just work with the ingredients that I already have in my kitchen. So this is what I had on hand. This week and it was super super delicious. I ended up baking this for I think right around an hour. I just popped it into a 375 degree oven. I would say check it around 45 minutes to an hour and it should be good to go. Everything was super delicious. This was very creamy. It had your vegetables in it already. So all I did was plop it into a bowl and it was super super quick and easy and my kids absolutely loved this one. The next meal that I'm sharing this week is ham and scalp potatoes. This is a perfect fall meal. We absolutely love this one. I had some ham left to use up in my freezer. I always chop up the extra ham and just stick it in my freezer for meals just like this. Super, super quick and easy. I had tons of potatoes in my pantry, so I figured this would be a perfect meal to use them up for. So here you see me just cutting up all of my potatoes. I used about six russet potatoes. You can play around and do whatever you want, but I did about six russet potatoes and I did make sure they were very thinly sliced for this recipe. So here are all of my potatoes sliced up and ready to go. Now I'm just adding right on top about three tablespoons of regular all-purpose flour. I'm also adding in about one and a half teaspoons of salt. This is just the regular salt that you get at the store. And then I'm adding in about half a teaspoon of black pepper. You can do a little bit more if you want, but I didn't want it to be too peppery for my kids. And then I'm also adding in some garlic powder along with about two cups of chopped ham. I just pulled this out of the freezer and let it thaw out. And then I'm getting all of this mixed together. I'm 
also adding in one yellow onion that is really nice and finely chopped. Of course, I'm gonna add in some cheese. I would say add in probably about half a cup to a cup of Colby Jack cheese, and I'm getting all of this mixed in as well. Of course, I am going to top it with some more cheese to get them really nice and creamy and delicious, but I do like to have some cheese mixed throughout as well. Here I'm just spraying my 9x13 pan with a little bit of oil and then I'm spreading that potato and ham mixture all throughout the pan, trying to make sure that it is nice and evenly distributed. So for the milk in this recipe, I am using whole milk. I would say use whole milk or 2%. I'm adding in right around three cups of milk. I did add a little splash more. You can see that I'm kind of pushing the potatoes down. You want the milk to come right up to the top of your potatoes. They can be peeking out just a little bit, but you want to make sure that there's enough milk in there to where the potatoes get fully cooked through. And then you're just going to chop it with your favorite type of cheese. I would say either Colby and Monterey Jack is a really good one or cheddar cheese would be perfect as well. I do like to top mine with some aluminum foil. I just feel like the potatoes get cooked really well this way. And then the last few minutes in the oven, I will just throw on the broiler. But I would say I stick this in a 375 degree oven for about an hour. Mine probably took a little bit longer. Just keep an eye on it. And like I said, throw it under the broiler for a few minutes to get that cheese nice and crisp at the end. This is super delicious for the fall time. I highly recommend this recipe. Recipe. I've been making it for years and it's super, super delicious. On this next night, I made a barbecue chicken pizza, and I have to say this is probably the best barbecue chicken pizza that I've ever made. I'm just starting off by getting my barbecue chicken ready. So I'm actually making a dry rub for this. So this is one tablespoon of brown sugar, one and a half teaspoons of salt, a teaspoon of black pepper, and then half a teaspoon of onion powder, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, and about a quarter teaspoon of paprika. This made the chicken super flavorful. I'm gonna have the whole recipe for this linked down below for the chicken. I just made it in my Instant Pot and it was so good on this pizza. It had so much flavor. Here in my Instant Pot, I just have two large chicken breasts. Mine were frozen. I'm adding in one cup of water with about half a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. I'm also adding in a quarter cup of zesty Italian dressing. The recipe actually called for one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, but I was completely out of it and I love zesty Italian dressing, so I just substituted that. I did also add a couple big scoops of minced garlic. I definitely went heavy on the garlic for this one. And then here is that dry rub that I had mixed up. Since my chicken breasts were frozen, I just sprinkled it right on top but if you have fresh chicken you can definitely rub it into the chicken if you would like I just dump mine right on there the recipe said to cook your chicken for about 15 minutes but I definitely had to put mine in a little bit longer I had really large chicken breasts so I would say I cooked mine for closer to like 20 to 22 minutes just make sure that your chicken is fully cooked through once it's done I just pulled it out and I shredded it up with my hand mixer I did want to make sure this was really finely shredded because this is going on pizza I didn't want big chunks on there and then I'm just topping it with my favorite barbecue sauce which is the sweet baby raisin one. This is so good, so full of flavor. I definitely recommend this barbecue sauce. I didn't add too much in there. I just did a little bit and then I will be topping it with some more on my pizza. Now it is time to actually assemble our pizza. You can use whatever pizza dough that you want, but I always use the KitchenAid pizza dough recipe. It is my all-time favorite one. It is super easy to throw together. You just make it in the KitchenAid. It could not be any easier. If you have never made dough before, this is a really good starter recipe. I have used it for years and it's just perfect. It comes out great every single time. It's also very easy to work with and spread around on my pan. So that is what you see me doing here. I will have the full recipe linked down below if you guys want to try it. I have shared the recipe in a video before so I will try and find that and link it for you as well.
I decided to keep this pizza super basic and simple. I literally just did the barbecue chicken and the cheese with a little bit of extra barbecue sauce. You can totally add on some onions on here. You can do tomatoes, peppers, whatever you like on your pizza. You could even do pineapple. I know some people like barbecue and pineapple together, but I just wanted to keep it super basic and simple. And I have to say this chicken was so flavorful. It was definitely the best barbecue chicken pizza that I have ever made. I have another barbecue chicken recipe that I absolutely love for sandwiches, but this was absolutely perfect on this pizza. I just topped it with some Colby and Monterey Jack cheese, a little bit of barbecue sauce, and then I threw it into a 410 degree oven for right around like 20 to 25 minutes. Just keep an eye on it. Once the pizza came out of the oven, I just added a little bit of butter to the crust. You can definitely melt your butter first, but this is just the really quick and easy way of doing it. I just take a butter knife and go around the crust. It makes it super nice and soft and delicious. I definitely recommend just that little bit of butter on the crust. It makes a total difference. And then I am just serving this up. Super quick and easy dinner. So this is our dinner for tonight. I did serve it with a nice little side salad and it was a perfect dinner. On this next night, I made a chicken taco pasta bake. I actually used up some leftover chicken taco meat that I had made for the night before. I will be sharing that recipe in an upcoming video, but I will also have the taco meat recipe linked down below for you guys. And then I'm just adding in one jar of pasta sauce with one can of diced tomatoes. And I'm just getting all of this mixed together for a really quick and easy sauce. This is gonna be part of a super delicious taco bake. While my sauce was simmering on the stove, I decided to get my noodles boiling. So I just used some rotini noodles. I did go ahead and salt the water really well. You can use whatever type of noodles you want for this. A ziti would be good. A rotini noodle is perfect. Even an elbow noodle could work. Just use whatever you have on hand and get that used up. Then I just drained those noodles off and now I'm getting all of the rest of my ingredients prepped. So here I just have my cottage cheese. I would say I used a couple cups of cottage cheese. I just used what we had on hand. This was part of the reason why I made this dish because I knew I needed to use this up. And then I'm just adding in one egg right into here. For seasonings in this cottage cheese, I'm adding in some dried parsley as well as some Italian seasoning. I would say I did probably about a half a teaspoon of each if I had to guess. And then I'm just getting all of this mixed together. This is gonna get layered into the taco bake. And now it is time to assemble our pasta. So I'm just gonna be assembling this kind of like a lasagna. I dumped about half of those rotini noodles right into the bottom and then I'm taking that cottage cheese mixture. I took about half of it and spread it right on top of the rotini noodles. If you have ever made lasagna, you know what I'm doing here. I'm just layering everything up together. Now I'm taking that sauce and the taco meat mixture and that's gonna go right on top of the cottage cheese. Then I'm gonna top it with some mozzarella and I'm gonna continue to do this until all of my ingredients are gone. If you have been on my channel for a while, you already know this, but I love to take leftovers and turn it into a different meal. So like on this night, I took the leftover taco meat and I was able to stretch it a little bit further by adding the noodles. I also had that cottage cheese to use up, so it worked out perfectly. Once the pasta bake is all ready and assembled, I just added some tin foil right on top. 
And then I just threw this into the oven for about half an hour, I would say. I threw it into a 375 degree oven. Just keep an eye on it. You can throw it under the broiler if you want when it is done, but this was super quick and easy and delicious and definitely very budget friendly as well. All right, friends, that is going to wrap up today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Hit that little subscribe button if you have not already. I do post a new what's for dinner video every single Sunday. I have a crock pot series going on on my channel. I actually just started that on Friday. So if you haven't watched that video yet, make sure you check that one out. Lots of meal prep, grocery hauls, all things food on my channel. So if that is something you're interested in, definitely hit that subscribe button. But I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye. As a young girl, the fields were mine We played hide and seek for hours Raised our shadows among the pines So offshore, playful and free Without a care